at night we were surrounded by tanks. The ghetto was surrounded by a special army and SS men and tanks were going into the ghetto. And I remember I saw it through the window. We were, I was not in the bunker yet. How a young man, it must have been young because all the people wouldn't have done it, went right to the tank and he threw a bump inside and exploded. The tank with the people, the German exploded. And the Germans were furious. They starting to, uh, how to tell you, to uh, take revenge. But there were people, there were no people on the street. So they were uh, right away, you know, like uh, with the tank, you know, destroying houses. Because they knew people are, in, you know, hi in hiding in houses. So they were trying to take revenge right away. And they were the most, in the most cruel way, they were putting bumps, one house after the other. And out of the blue sky, one afternoon, the, Nazi, the SS came in and just opened up the wall, they knew exactly where it was at. And before I turned around, there was an SS man standing here with a, with a machine gun like this, and rouse, rouse. That was the end. Came out Henderhoch. Henderhoch and every and the valuables, everything you have, you know, have to put in a pot. Line us up against the wall. I was standing against the wall and and what did, what do Jews do when they're gonna get be executed? What do they say? What do they say? Shema Israel. Everybody's praying, everybody this. We came down the main street and they tell us to sit down on the middle of the street on, on, the, on the cobblestones and there was a machine gun trained on us, all the oldest people from, the, from that cellar. We stood there, we sat there for about, oh, maybe two hours. In the meantime, the Nazis had a field day, particularly with the women. They ripped their skirts off, they abused them in front of everybody, you know. It was just horrible. Horrible is not the word, it's disgusting, horrible. I looked what happened there in that particular group and I said to myself, maybe it's a blessing my mother is not there. When I went up the smoke, I left the, I was living in a cemetery with my parents. And I, I went out, I could not stay there. And I was walking on the streets. And uh, the whole city was in flame because the whole city was burning. So many blocks, not one, so many blocks. And I looked at these blocks. But the worst thing for me was the Eastern Sunday. When I was in the church listening to all the sermons of the, of the priests, and I blend in with them together, and I came out. The priest was standing in the front, greeting all the parishioners, and they were dressed in their best clothing on Sunday. Most of them took their children to their, to their carousel, which was with music, which was around that. You could see with the naked eye what was going on in the ghetto, the flames and the burning, everything. And you were just listening to the expressions, Jews are burning, not burning. Jews are Zitkishes Majum, Jews are frying. I was in that environment of the people. Until today I cannot understand where did I take the strength not to scream, not to reveal who I am. That I look at my people burning and I cannot say anything. And here the carousel is, dry, is running. The people are on the carousel with the parents happy. 
ואז הועברת אל כיכר האיסוף הידועה בוורשה, האום שלקפלץ? כן, הועברתי אז בפעם האחרונה דרך רחובות ורשה, ראיתי אותה דרך חורבנה, ראיתי גביעות על פני הרחובות וראיתי את הבתים ההרוסים, והובילו אותי לאום שלקפלץ. When we packed into the trains, we couldn't, we couldn't pull out our hands, that's how tight, like sardines we were packed. And later in the night, until they had all the trains filled in, they, they locked the doors and they stationed on the top of the trains SS, Ukraine, mostly Ukrainians with rifles, they pulled out. We didn't know where we are going.